karma, but before we do a talk about karma, we have to also talk about what creates karma. And what creates karma, you would not believe it, is your thoughts. Your thoughts create your karma. Right? The moment you think about something, karma is the wheel of karma, the motion of karma starts. So when karma begins with a thought, that thought is now like an arrow. And it goes in the direction that you have pointed. So a, car a thought, like an arrow, begins the journey of karma. So it begins from the moment you are in the woman's womb, the baby gets those thoughts from the mother and so on, and that's what creates you, creates the baby. So karma is a very uh, important lesson to learn because with karma, if you understand karma, you will understand yourself. And you will understand why you are here, why you're sitting here today, or why you, why you, why you meet this person that you um, uh, are marrying or getting married to, or why you're having this ch child and so on, or why you have this son. Karma determines that, and we will look into that as we look into karma today, and then from there realize that the karma of the universe um, is created by the ages, which is like the 2012 and so on. So karma has a lot to do with your thought, what you think. One man created computers, Bill Gates, and he created that, all that karma for himself. Uh, because it benefited the world, he became rich. One man created terror. One man created killing. Killed people. Murdered people. And that one man, he created sin. And so he was never rich. He became poor. You know what I'm talking about. I'm starting with land. So here's one person who created good for the world, who did good for the world, who did everything that helped the world, uh, Bill Gates. And he became the richest man in the world. He became happy. He now has a charity, and he, gives, uh, he helps people. And he became rich. And then the other man who is um, creating evil, destroyed people, killed people in 9-11, and so uh, he became poor, lived a poor life, you saw some of the videos, and died in a very tragic way. It's almost like a movie goes. You know when the guy died and so on. And don't forget, right after Sai Baba died, they caught Osama Os Os in land. And we have the Cyrus. But Sai Baba also was nine billion dollars rich, right? I don't know if people don't see, but here's where people create such good karma that they became very rich in their lives. So who can say God is not watching the world? Right? I'm sure some of you have read the Bhagavad Gita, and a whole chapter has been dedicated to karma, yoga. There are different types of yoga. Are you aware of that? There is what, what you call hatha yoga. What's hatha yoga? Hatha yoga is when you do exercises. When you exercise your body, you, do, you, you twist and you turn and you, you, know, you do a lot of exercising. That's called physical or hatha yoga. The yoga means whatever you're doing is going to benefit the world. Yoga yoking yourself in the universe. So they have Gyan Yoga. Do you know what is Gyan Yoga? Gyan Yoga is when you seek knowledge. Knowledge of the universe. If you're learning life code, and you're learning how to, um, how to uh, predict uh, the future, learning about how to know your life, then life code is part of Gyan Yoga. So that's the yoga. So when you say you're studying life code, you're really doing Gyan Yoga which is knowledge. And then, 
you know, there is Kundalini Yoga, right? And Kundalini Yoga is when you are wanting to get your chakras so tuned that you can your third eye open and you can see things, you can see the future. You can when your third eye open, uh, it can open also in the other way, so you need a good right? And there's karma yoga, right? Karma yoga means whatever action you have performed. Whatever action you perform, that's the result you get. Right? So take for example baby. She she took that action to bring the baby here, and the baby is going to get connected with this energy, everything. And she might not see it in five years, she might not see it in ten years, but she might see it in fifteen years or twenty years when the baby recalls the energy that was given to the baby today and all the time. And so that's when you want that to happen because that's when the baby now can use that, that knowledge, that energy to take care of itself. So brain is called karma yoga. So everybody hears about yoga, but nobody knows that there are so many different types of yoga. There's prana yoga, which is the breath which you practice, right? But one should practice something called karma yoga. Karma yoga means doing good actions to get good results. So when you want to have a better life, create a good life, then you create karma yoga, right? Every day you create a good action that will bring, for example, I'll give you some example of karma yoga. I met this guy, and every word that came out of his mouth was a curse. He would curse everything that, that he had uh, And I used to work, when I first came to the country, I used to work in a factory. That's why I met this guy. So, you know, in the factory environment, he would curse at everyone. Anybody told him something, he, it would be a curse. Every, every other word would be a curse, a, a, a lewd word. You know? So, I met him about a year later, a couple of years later, I met him about two or three years later. And I went to talk to him and he, and he wouldn't talk to me. So I said, how are you? He said, he's not talking. Then I realized he lost his voice. Right? And I remembered when he used to curse a lot. Right? But he told me, well, he was telling me in, uh, in, in, in language that a doctor said something went wrong with his vocal cord. No, but he accepted that. He did not think that it was karma that caused him to stop speaking or losing his voice. Right? And then when I began my Swami work, um, this guy came to me and he says, uh, his wife, he had a lot of foot pain. His wife, he had a lot of foot pain, he had gout. You know what gout? Gout, a lot of pain in the foot and so on. So I, um, I looked at the chart and I looked at it as, as she said she was, um, the wife, you know, she was um, complaining about abuse and so on. So I said, did you kick your wife? And he said, yes. I said, okay, that's what caused your gout. Because gout cannot be cured. So I said, okay, well, then here's what you need to do. Start praying, ask forgiveness for kicking her, ask her to forgive you. And what do you know? The gout was gone. You know, after after a few weeks. So as a result, people do things, create karma, and don't realize the result. So as you can see, we create our karma. 
we create our counter. So if that is the case, now if you are a smart person and I told you that you can, you, I give you this, this, this equation, this formula, and I said, okay, since everything you do bad gives you bad result, then how about if we change it? I'm using the equation now. Since everything is, you do good, we'll get good results. Right? So that's... Now you're going to say to me, well, what good should I do? Right? Well, the good that you should do is do what is beneficial to you and the universe. Right? So always give some charity. So when you come to see the Swami, what the Swami does? He gives you the mantra, and he tells you to do the mantra, and he tells you to fast, and stay away from meat, fish, and eggs, give up your black clothes, and so on. What is he doing? He's trying to create a formula and a, a good action that will create the work, create the good things for you. So one of the biggest problems I have is that I fell, I fall in love with the devotee. I, 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 as soon as I see the devotees, I fall in love with them. And I tell them, okay, stay away from the meat, stay away from the red meat, fish and eggs and everything, and um, do your fasting, and then I say, okay, go back to the fish, right? And, but don't eat the red meat. And then they think I'm not looking. So they go back to the red meat two, three months later, and then they get, a, get the problem again. And they said, they'll come back and say, Swami, uh, you know, it's not working. <laughs> it's not working. Meanwhile, they didn't tell me that they still <coughs> wearing the black clothes and they're still, still eating the red meat. Right? So, technically, they have given up the karma of good, so they get back the bad. So that happens, right? So you have to realize that whatever action you are taking, if you can know how the action results, you'll be able to do wonderful. So if you want to win the lottery, what do you do? Everybody wants to win the lottery. Everybody wants a lot of money, right? But what do you notice in the lottery if you're winning? The old people win who don't need the money. Most of the time the old people win who don't need the money. Right? And why the old people win? Because they have done so much karma that it amounts to a million dollars. Right? And the guy who never did karma and he win the lottery, he loses the money in two months. He, he wins the lottery, but no money stays because he didn't have the karma for that. Right? He didn't have the, what is karma? The good thing, the good actions that he did. He didn't have that. So that's why we have to do things that will happen. When we do prayers, meditation, when we do fire ritual, which is called Agni Hotra, we affect the air, we affect the universe and everything. And so, Agni Hotra, I think some of you do Agni Hotra here, or what you call fire ritual. And this fire ritual goes into the air, it affects the atoms, the neutron, and it may creates the, the desire. So that's why some people say, well, if I did Agni Hotra, I feel good because I, I, my desire come true. Because they, it goes into the air and everything, and it affects the neutrons and protons. And so, on. so Agni Hotra is very scientific. We call it Hava, Hawan in Hinduism. In Hinduism, Hawan is one of the most powerful prayers there is. Why? Because it is fire that creates energy into the air and makes things happen. So here's where you can create, create a karma. You can create good action by whatever you pray into the fire, whatever you put into the fire. 